They prepared for this feast, including all the princes of the Philistine nation, especially the heroine at that time, Delilah, was given a seat of honor. And then they were ready to have Shimshon brought into the center of the arena. He was led by a Philistine man because he was blind. Shimshon was well acquainted with the entire area. He knew about this stadium being the largest of all the, the arenas that the Philistines had. They asked this guide, this Philistine guide, to bring him close to the center pillars. He'd be there anyhow in the middle of the arena, but he was very tired from his work. He wanted to just lean against the pillars to rest against them. Uh, unsuspectingly, this boy brought him to these pillars. He stood there, and while standing there, the Philistines began to cry a loud roar of jest and mockery, cursing at Shimshon laughing and joking about it. He felt with his hands for the pillars next to him. He stood between them. And then he rested his hands on the pillars and looked up sightless to heaven. He prayed to Hashem. He started to press forward against these two pillars. Of course, the Philistines, seeing what he was doing, roared in laughter. He was a puny human being who lost his strength completely against these two pillars, which were hundreds of times as tall and as wide and as powerful as like two solid mountains trying to upset these pillars. He watched, screamed, until he had reached the peak of his strength. He pressed forward, and they could see the cracks beginning to form in these pillars. For a second, there was silence, and then the loudest roar of all was when these two pillars cracked completely, the entire top of the stadium caved in on top of all the Philistines there, and every one of the Philistines present was crushed in this rubble of rock. Buried in all this debris was Shimshon himself. But later on, Torah says that they sought out his relatives came to bury him, bring him back to Israel, give him a hero's funeral. How do you find a body in such rubble. The rock itself could crush a body into a point where it cannot be recognized. Yet they dug up these stones and found that his body was, he was dead, but from suffocation. He was not crushed at all. So strong was he physically that the rocks did not mar him at all. And so he was given this hero's funeral, buried in honor, knowing that he had led the Jews for 20 years to victory. Now here the Torah says, one sentence, that this last act of his, to destroy the stadium, the number of dead that he killed at the time of his death were more than he had killed throughout his entire life. The message says that the message here is a very different one. Shimshon was a tzaddik. The Torah states this for a deliberate reason, to show, to illustrate, as the Gemara says, that when a person is privileged to witness, to see a tzaddik, if he ever sees a true tzaddik, then he should try to become very closely attached to him. Because if he does not become attached to this tzaddik, he's going to have to go through a cleansing process later on. Every person, no matter how young or how old he is when he passes away, no matter how good or how bad, he has some stains that he has acquired through his sins. And the only way to remove these stains of sins are through a cleansing process. The cleansing process is only fire that can remove these stains. Those are called the fires of Gehenna. The Gemara itself tells us about the suffering of Gehenna that cannot be described in physical terms. The fires of Gehenna. Now, in this case, a person who tries to come close to the tzaddik knows that then the tzaddik can purify him, erase those stains due to his sins, where he will not be required to have these stains erased the hard way through the fires of Gehenna. That's during a tzaddik's lifetime. If a person was zoha to get close to the tzaddik, and then the tzaddik passes away, what does this person do then? The answer is that if he maintains a strong faith in the tzaddik, he maintains his close relations with the tzaddik by studying the writings of this tzaddik, by continuing to believe firmly in this tzaddik, he will find 
that he turned now, the tzaddik will come close to him. And that those powers he had seen in the tzaddik during his lifetime, powers with the tzaddik to purify him, cleanse him, now the tzaddik's powers are multiplied many fold. Which is the Gemara says that the tzaddik is far greater after he passes away than during his lifetime. The main moral here is, as Rabbi Nezal said, there is no such thing as Yush. No such thing as giving up hope for a Jew, whether it is an individual Jew, or whether it is a group, a community, or whether it's the entire Jewish people. If the Jews see that things have turned black for them, the world has turned against them, and there seems to be no hope, they should know that if all the countries of the world, their closest allies, have forsaken them, never will Hashem forsake them, Chassashol. Because Hashem is our guide, Hashem is our guard, Hashem guides over us, and just as Hashem is infinite, is everlasting and eternal, so has He sworn that His people, we the Jews, will remain eternal. We have to have a strong faith with which we'll be deserving of seeing our ultimate victory and glory with the coming of Mashiach will come definitely our time now, which means we'll have to see with our eyes the opinion, the rebuilding of the base of Mikdash, the Hedim Yerenu, the main Yerenu.